And here we are. That was that was that was unique. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Blockchain Basement. My name is TJ. This is the best crypto show that happens in Kennesaw, Georgia, in the basement. Uh, in 2022 on December 13th at 1 23 p.m. Uh, no, just kidding. This is a great show where we talk about crypto with a lot of our favorite friends uh, and just hang out. We've got an actual longtime Bit Squad member joining us here today. This is Ray, uh, who's somebody we know from the gym uh, that just hang comes and hangs out every once in a while. So uh, everybody ask him a lot of questions and uh, you know we're going to have him hanging out with us today. Love to have you guys hanging out, obviously, in the chat. You know, we got Bubba's Crypto, The Real Crypto, Steve-O. Still working on that mod party, brother. Crypto Thorn, Nakodu, uh, Stacy Lee, G Raz, Chemistry Bro, Crypto Thorn, Corey Harden. Always, always, always love having all you guys in the chat. And of course, if any of you guys are around here, uh, like I know Corey, you've mentioned maybe coming by, maybe you too can join live in studio, uh, just like Ray. So, Ray, uh, real quick before we get going, we do want to hear. Obviously, we've got uh, Hannah joining us here today. Uh, crypto prepper now back. Relax, boys. Yeah, <laughs> crypto. Yeah, don't everybody jump on Drew at once. At once, know. you know. Take I know it I'm easy. Gorgeous, uh, no, but... he's back from. Um, Alex uh, Info, Jones. yeah, Info Wars yesterday, and then of course uh, on the on the spaceship commander BJ Biscuit Jesus, the magic man himself. Uh, wearing, it <laughs> wearing the same 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 hoodie from yesterday. No, just kidding. different hoodie. Yeah, it is dream hack. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had my tracksuit on yesterday. So Full tracksuit. So real quick, Ray, uh, no, not John Ray, uh, not the Ray you're thinking. I'm not the one who's been testifying in court all day, which uh, we will touch on a little bit as we get into it. We'll touch on CPI. We'll touch on SBF, of course, now officially arrested for those Wait, of you who don't. touching him? Oh, somebody, somebody's going to be yeah. touching him. It may not be us, uh, but he's going to have a new, uh, a new, uh, some new roommates soon, uh, and it might be worse than Caroline. So Wait, did they just <laughs> ask if Ray is Nick's dad? Yeah, I can see it. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Ray's uh, the Nick Tater. Uh, this is the Commander Ray. Uh, Ray, tell us yeah. a little bit about yourself, when you came into crypto, and then how you found the Bit Squad. I came into crypto pretty early. I bought late 2017 and mm -hmm. thought that that was going to be amazing. And then I forgot about it for a year or two. And then I saw you guys. Yeah. Run, and I was like, holy crap, that's actually worth something. Yeah. And then I went and looked at it. And then I made incredibly poor decisions uh, <laughs> kind of part way through. And I figured I'd come today because you don't have enough really old people. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, yeah, bring in, bring in a different demographic. You don't strike me as a really old person. Well, well how old I, would you say you are? Uh, how old would I say I am yeah. or how old would I like to How be? do you feel? Uh, how do I feel? Yeah. Uh, I feel? I feel like I am, I am a spring chicken um, that probably is due for a very untimely end. No. Uh, oh no! Yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> ah, you know, in in terms of in terms of life, uh, well, nobody gets out alive. So that well, that is uh, true. So yeah. that um, is half of my favorite Paris Bueller. Well, you are you are very you do seem very healthy. Chat says uh, looks you. like you're only uh, 32. So then the uh, real crypto said, Stevo is my favorite new person. Yeah, there you go. They said you look swole. Swole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's your bench? What do you bench? <laughs> oh, not nearly as much as I used to. Okay. No, I, I, what was your uh, lifetime peak? Lifetime was uh, I doubled 425. Wow. Okay. 425 and, uh, twice. Squat. Squat was my big one. Uh, I did. Uh, I did four with uh, 715. <laughs> but that was that was that's that a was, lot of weight to have on your shoulders. That I was care. when I was much younger. Yeah. Uh, I was that's I was good. once strong, and now I shoot for simply being capable. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, uh, healthy. That's about all we can do. Yeah. yeah. Shelby. <laughs> Shelby. Shout out to Shelby at the gym. He's our trainer. Oh, Shelby's uh, a man. Big yeah. uh, big advocate for not getting hurt. You know, which uh, yeah. believe it or not is a goal that you want to have when you're lifting weights, no matter how uh, young <laughs> or stupid you might be. So you've got to uh, be stupid to start slinging iron that yeah, way. That's, that's a lot the of only weight. way you do more is yeah. really be dumb. So, okay, so you bought crypto, forgot about it, came back to it, made a bunch of crazy decisions. Where are you, where, what's your relationship like with crypto today? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you still buying? Are you accumulating? I absolutely love it. I'm accumulating DCA. I've got my bags, not as big as I, as I would like, but I'm convinced this is the fourth industrial revolution. Um, yeah. For, and it, it will absolutely be the same level, at least, of a disruptor as the internet was. And I'm, I'm old enough to remember when the internet first came out and seeing the hype cycle mm -hmm. and how anything with an I in front of it and a dot com at the end, the late 90s, uh, absolutely got tens of millions of dollars in valuations. And we saw the same sort of thing probably in the last two years where there is that 2000 style shakeout and the real players are the ones that are going to survive. Yep. And think getting in now and understanding now will be life-changing for you and for your family. And, 
and as an older guy with a family, that's that's a much more important thing. So no, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. That's mm-hmm. a great point. This is a revolution. You know, it's a digital revolution where we're seeing assets moving from the physical to the digital. And I had the same thought and the same kind of thesis that I, I w- I'm probably a little bit younger than you, so I didn't necessarily see it happen. I read about it happening. It happened in my lifetime, but I was too young to really take advantage of the internet boom where I saw this is like, this is going to be just like the internet. If I can get ahead of this now, if I can understand it now and take advantage, uh, it will set me up for a lifetime. And I think that's uh, a really good way to look at it. Those who can survive, and if you're here right now, if you're surviving 2022, if you survive 2018, 2019, you know, that's really the goal in crypto right now. Survive and accumulate, survive and accumulate, uh, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's things, you know, other things that you're passionate about, uh, staying in it, staying educated, staying engaged and adapting, which we were talking about a lot with AI and chat GBT. Uh, that's a really key factor in all of this stuff. And I would highly encourage all of you guys to do it. And if you're here, you know, you are surviving. So uh, congratulations. You're one of the smart ones. So uh, real quick, we're going to touch on the price uh, coming in at, we got a little pumper. We got some, we had some positive price action. So we're coming in at 16.7 basically right now. You can see this morning on the price, it looks like it pumped all the way up to 18.1 very briefly uh, before pulling back to 17.8 when that candle closed, which sitting at 17.7, not too, too surprising. So uh, this is nice, positive. This, we're looking at the 15 minute here. So this would have been, you know, right back here at 9.30, but you know, I'm I'm sure those the announcement came out at 9:30. Boom, one big pump, you know, and then some quick pumps. If you guys were watching BitBoy Crypto stream this morning, uh, Frank came on and did some good analysis, kind of showed us why it can jump those gaps so easy. I don't have uh, all the uh, volume profilers and stuff on right now, but you could see, you know, kind of right here in this range was a gap in the volume where it it closed up real quick, or I mean, it jumped up there real quick. Uh, we're gonna have some more. Um, Uh, The Fed meeting uh, is happening today and tomorrow. We're going to hear more Mm -hmm. about that tomorrow. Probably see a slight raise. Probably pull back on it a little bit, but uh, yeah, so we'll touch on this story. Bitcoin sees CPI volatility as lower inflation sends Bitcoin price to 18K. Uh, November CPI was 7.1 year on year compared to 7.3 forecast month over month. So basically... Still very high inflation, still a lot of inflation, 7% inflation in my book, uh, not something really to celebrate but the way they uh what did you say right before the uh right before the show they did a good job uh yeah they did a good job cooking the book yeah right yeah um and it's just about how they do the evaluations of what the actual inflation rates are they change what qualifies as a specific mortgage this includes certain commodities that are at their heights for cost and stuff like that to help the overall number come down but yeah i mean it's kind of uh I mean, I wouldn't say 25 is out of the question now that they've gotten some, you know. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I 25 basis points for the next raise is what he's referring I, to. Obviously, I'd be surprised by it, but now there is a potential that they could roll on um, multiple months of 25 base points and then tailoring out. It's more than likely still going to be 50 point base points. But, yeah. I would think um, so too. But I mean, if they were to come in at 25, that would be very bullish. I would feel like for, especially for crypto, because yeah. it doesn't take much to move it. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you'd maybe get us that Santa rally. Uh, mm-hmm. we were talking to riddle with pun says, yeah, TJ, it's a sad state of affairs when 7% inflation is considered low. Yeah. We got, <laughs> uh, Cowan. I really like, I just wanted to pull this up. It's a very simple tweet. He, uh, he pushes these out. I just like it because it's, he puts the information right at the top headline CPI. Is at 7.1, they're expecting 7.3. Core came in at 6.0, they're expecting 6.1. So, again, not necessarily low, but lower than it was year over year, month over month, and uh, lower than what was necessarily expected. Would that make it the taller midget? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the nice uh, Maybe that's not a nice way to say that. No, it's a taller, small person, For maybe. I don't know. Shame. But, uh, shame. I, Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's yeah, vertically it's, challenged. Crit- vertically challenged. I mean, yes. Willow just came out, so we should talk about dwarf. It should be the tall of the dwarf. What just came out? Willow. Mm. Oh, what's the, that? The yeah. series based on the mid to early nineteen eighties adventure uh, adventure fantasy film with um, Val Warwick. Kilmer. Yeah, well, I was oh, going to say, I was gonna, yeah, 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 and Warwick Davis. Hell yeah, the not so immortal Val Kilmer. Who's the Hulk guy that's not talking? You missed it. His man to walk. His name's Ray. He's from the gym. He's joining us here today. Little cap gem, Casper. Yeah. Oh, Casper. He's a Casper oh, guy. Huh? Got him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's oh. see. Let me spin back through here. Top three coins in the top 50 that has high potential for the next bull run. 
Uh, we already know yours. Dag isn't top fifty, is it? Yeah, what would you I, say top fifty? I mean, I like Dag. I like. I don't know if ICP's in there. But it's top. Uh, I like ICP. I like Dag. I like Cardano, and I like XRP for the gain side. I'm still buying Bitcoin too. Um, but oh, just, hey, look! They finally updated uh, Elron and put Multiverse X on mm. uh, on Coin Market Cap. Mm, still the asterisk for Elron. Still the asterisk. Yeah. So, so let's see. Top fifty. I'm gonna go down here and look at number fifty. I mean, Ave. Strong project. When it, coming, when it comes down to survival, what I was just talking about, you want to survive in crypto, I would pick Ave as a strong uh, project to survive. Mm. Uh, maybe not a strong pumper tokenomics wise, you know, but uh, strong DeFi protocol that I and I think DeFi is really going to start to hit its stride next time. ICP comes in at thirty seven. I'm, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not as bullish on ICP as a lot of the other people around here are. H bar, a lot of people like thirty six. Quant thirty, Algo thirty twenty eight. Um, Cosmos. Cosmos. Cosmos is my favorite in the mid twenties. Yeah. You know that, and it's it's tough for me to get off it. Um, but I mean, Polygon's I, an obvious. You know, one. like is it is it what? What I'm gonna say? What I'm gonna say? Ethereum. You know, does that make me crazy? Yeah. That that's gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> and you want me to pick top fifty? I'll, I, at this point, you know, Ethereum looks really strong. The merge. Um, token the tokenomics post merge in a bull run. Like if if we still see Ethereum NFTs going strong in the next bull run, it, like you you're gonna see that. Um, and Ethereum layer twos, I guess you could say. Yeah, somebody yeah. said Matic. Somebody, you know, you're gonna see a lot of people talking optimism and Arbitrum. Uh, I think seeing Ethereum network activity next bull run uh will be very very strong yeah. uh you know bitcoin always very strong too i mean alts guys be careful i would say this you know like i think we're near about you know at or near a bottom you know it is a good time to accumulate but i still recommend accumulating top coins or at least mm -hmm. that's what i'm doing right now. i'm accumulating bitcoin and ethereum there's still uh alts could still fall a pretty good amount from here even if we do see some positive movements for bitcoin and ethereum and that's something we saw a lot in 2019 where bitcoin and ethereum would see slight moves up and then, and then maybe slight move down, and then alts would get wrecked, and then Bitcoin, Ethereum, slight move up, slight move down, alts would get wrecked again. When Bitcoin and Ethereum was pretty much trading in a tight range, every single time it would pull back, the alts would fall down and lose their structures and trade outside their ranges. So I just be very careful with mid to low cap alts. Not saying you can't find really, really good entries right now. Just know um, there's just not nearly as much volume, not nearly as much liquidity on them, and it's very easy to push them down. <laughs> Turns into being pushed up later, but uh, I just say careful with a lot of those alts. So um, that's how I look at it too. You know, it's like when I say I'm buying, you know, Bitcoin and the alts. It's if I'm buying fifteen hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin, then I'm buying fifty dollars worth of an alt to add into that, just for high risk, high reward situation to try to position myself uh, for big gainers and then have the consistent movement of Bitcoin, um, kind of as the overall uh, holding in my portfolio seem to work out well. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, okay, switching uh, switching gears a little bit, not talking as much. Well, I'm not. I, it's not a story. I'm not talking about this. Oh, damn it. It's Ooh. okay. <laughs> uh, getting away from talking directly about the markets, because uh, we, we do talk about it a lot. Everybody kind of knows where we're at with the CPI. I mean, we looked at the same chart here yesterday with uh, the basis points. I want to talk to uh, Prepper Crypto, uh, Mr. Yeah. Drew over here. Tell us a little bit about the experience in Austin, Texas. Uh, what was the most interesting thing about going to the Infowars set? What anything that surprised you? Just give us a little recap over your last couple of days. Man, I mean, I was uh, taken back at how robust and professional that uh, that headquarters is. No, and they do a lot of fade cuts instead of straight cuts. Oh you know, <laughs> no, they they have an absolute behemoth of a system. Um, and Alex is Alex Jones is just as I imagined him. He is the same on camera as he is off camera. Yeah, big energy. Yeah, you know, big energy. His hand is like shaking a baseball glove. And uh, <laughs> I mean, he you know he's you know, forty five minutes of show, five minutes of eating or drinking something, and then he's flying back on the the set. He's very high, fast paced um very yeah direct. you said that's something you said to me earlier i thought was hilarious you said yeah we'll be sitting there talking to him and then we hit a break and then he just walk off and eat a burger and then come yeah. right back and i'm like that sounds like yeah. something very, yeah. that's very i haven't watched a lot of alex jones but it sounds like very alex jones like yeah. very on brand just go pound a burger real, all right let's get back to the show yeah, yeah man and they have an amazing research staff um uh, you know tons of people totally dedicated to to finding and aggregating information Alex and Ben, I felt like made a great connection between the need for decentralized internet and free speech, 
um, kind of looking at that financial sovereignty aspect of things and the actual steps that we can take as people um, to find alternatives to the incoming CBDs and if you so wish. You know, it's kind of discussing the pros and cons in a very level-headed way. Um, and I think that's really great because I come from the beans and bullets side of uh, society and crypto found me by force. So um, it's good to make that connection and to bring the information of what the history of Bitcoin is and the potentials um, that our financial system can it discover in this uh, restructuring of how money moves, essentially. And you know, I looked at it like I walked out of there. I was like, you know, essentially, I just feel like I'm part of the, you know, the digital CBDC tea party to come by by leveraging into Bitcoin, being hard headed about financial sovereignty. I think that that's super important for people to understand, especially with what's happened in the last few years. And I think a lot more people are waking up just because of what's happened. Do you see was do they see live chat reactions? They do. So how yeah. does when how did they his audience respond to the discussion where they They loved it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cuz you have a lot of people that are on the fence, you know, just yeah. like I was 3 or 4 years ago or watching the price go up and down. You don't really understand the network, the value, the having process, the whole thing. Like what we think is like kind of average crypto content. Um, you know, that's like way highbrow for someone that has no exposure to it. Right. So yeah, I think that it's super important to explain the basics and really the the reasoning why decentralized uh, forms of money are going to be extremely important in the coming years as we see CBDCs become a reality in our lives. Yeah, I mean, because they they immediately see the threat of CBDCs. Absolutely, so, yeah. abs absolutely. You know, it's the Black Mirror episode everyone always references, um, but then it became reality in Canada and you know uh, various other places. So. That's became a really uh, forefront and real issue. And yeah, I, mean, I think we're going to have a, a Tea Party type situation in the next 10 years and possibly even a balkanization over the situation. Yeah, I agree. And then Real Crypto Steve said, I used to like Alex Jones, but I got to be honest, I don't like what he said about the Sandy Hook situation. That's where it crossed the line for me. And yeah, I think a lot of people would, uh, you know, agree with that statement and say, you know, at I don't agree with everything Alex Jones has ever done right. for sure. Right. I, you know, we, you know, everybody has a right to their own takes, their own opinions and that sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. just because you, you know, have a discussion with somebody doesn't mean obviously everybody agrees on everything all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes having discussions so important. So, right. I mean, to Drew's point, really the purpose is getting the message of Bitcoin, of decentralized digital assets out to the world, out in front of as many different people mm -hmm. as possible. Uh, and you can't deny that is a large platform uh, with a lot of different people. And so if we're able to come there and share that message with that audience, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we feel like that's a very beneficial thing to a lot of different people to help them learn about the benefits of Bitcoin right. uh, and, you know, what it takes, what, you know, what how it affects privacy, how it affects human rights, how it affects, uh, you know, uh, societies. And that's really how we came into contact with them to begin with was mm -hmm. back in, I believe it was late 2020 that we did a whole series on the World Economic Forum in this uh, you know, and how money works and how the Federal Reserve works and how they print dollars and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and that, and it was a, it was, I think it was five to seven different video series and they found that and that they wanted us to come on and talk about that. How, uh, a lot of the, you know, like what he refers to as global elites, which is a pretty good way to describe it. I feel like, uh, have a plan to work a one world economy, mm -hmm. one world money system, uh, that gives them a lot of control and authority over people's, uh, day to day lives. So, yep. uh, and Shifting gears from that a little bit, this is somebody, one of my favorite, uh, you guys will see me bring this up all the time, Alex Gladstein from the Human Rights Foundation. This is uh, another thing I thought you would find interesting. I, we don't, I won't dig into this entire thread because it was pretty long, but he's, he uh, quote tweeted this, interesting concept of what gold producing developing nations like Ghana might do pay for energy with gold and save the USD to service the debt mm -hmm. uh, because we're talking, again, this is a bit of a long conversation. We're coming through in the middle of it here, but he was basically saying they don't need U.S. dollars to service debt. They need U.S. dollars to buy energy. If they don't have enough U.S. dollars to do both, they can use gold for oil to reduce the energy USD demand and free those U.S. dollars up to use for debt repayment without having to reduce energy demand. Yep. So basically oil rich countries and you could do this with bitcoin essentially with mining you can get free energy mm -hmm. to make your cost of bitcoin next to nothing then you have bitcoin as your store of value instead of gold so if you have a lot of gold you're buying down the energy and you're producing bitcoin which is going up in value could and, and we are seeing nations all around the world 
hoarding gold right now. Right. Uh, and we know energy, the price of energy, the cost of energy. We've talked about ESG scores here somewhat. Uh, it's going to be... That really is the trade war we're seeing happen. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think we could see nations that are, you know, oil rich or gold rich, you know, doing that exchange? Oh, to, absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. You, you know, like you have to think about in context, like each different uh, nation has strong suits and abilities within themselves, and they're going to highlight those. I mean, U.S. dollars are comparatively still pretty expensive to the room, to the rest of the world's uh, fiat values. So, you know, servicing their debt in U.S. dollars will give them a bigger bang for their buck in getting out of debt and uh, under the control of the IMF and the, uh, the system that we uh, have a handle on. But then, you know, having that gold backing, um, I think, is going to help them actually have a, uh, a stronger stance for their own personal fiat currencies longer down the road as they develop and kind of flex that muscle. They don't have to go by the same EPA uh, guidelines that Americans do in, in processing gold. They don't, it doesn't cost them as much. So. Well, speaking of gold, have you guys seen how uh, apparently Russia no longer will, well, they're talking about no longer accepting USD for yeah. gold. I'm sorry, yeah. for oil and only switching to gold. Yes. Yeah, I did see that. That's, um, I and mean, basically they want it to be set, their preference, I'm sure, is for it to be settled in rupees, you know, which they're yeah. trying to, that are tied to gold now at this mm -hmm. point, you know, or so digital, uh, Chinese one. Yeah. You know, I think part of the issue though, for the developing countries is a lack of coherent infrastructure mm -hmm. for the nations that themselves, they've been oil rich. You're talking about specifically Ghana yeah. and a lot of the, um, a lot of the North African countries that have been oil rich for decades yeah. and have been unable to service their debt adequately. Yeah. And the idea of transitioning over to a digital economy, I think is a separate conversation. Um, I think first and foremost, looking at the, um, the infrastructural uh, discipline and the ability for a lot of these countries that not have not necessarily been representative republics and mm -hmm. um, haven't been in a position to, uh, I think, in the most mature and forward thinking ways, manage a lot of their financial obligations um, just because they'll have the ability going forward. And this will be an absolutely new ability for them to transfer right. um, and, and going about it. I think that's a lot to assume that they actually will. Yeah, well, and you that's an absolutely great point. And there's also not a lot of, there's not, not incentive, there's disincentive for other nations to help or assist or for them to be properly represented in any of those, you know, hearings or republics that you're, rep, you know, that you're mentioning. So, yes, there's lack of infrastructure, lack of support, lack of trade, lack of commerce, lack of a lot of things it would take to get all of these things done, you know. But it is now a possibility. And so that's that's what's interesting to me over time to see, does it be start becoming more part of the conversation? It's not going to happen overnight. Like even uh, like uh, if you look at uh, El Salvador with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the Bitcoin volcano mining, yep. everything they've been doing down there, you know, it's been a, a year or two. A lot of it's been talked. Now we're talking about slowly getting some action. But what do we see? We see the world the IMF working to slow it down, not mm -hmm. to speed it up, even though you'd think, hey, this is positive growth for global economy. We're seeing good commerce coming out of these other countries. And the IMF's like, oh, actually, now we're going to we're gonna pull back yeah. on those ones. We're going to make it harder, to, to your point, for you to service that debt. We're going to make it harder for you to dig out of this hole because we're, we're not liking what we're seeing. We'd like you down there you yeah. know, servicing all this debt for us. Um, and it's easier to take advantage and get all those same resources. Exactly. Right. Africa and a lot of the oil-producing nations well, they'll let treated pri as let's, let's let private companies come in there and do that under you know specific you know instructions private. and exactly private you know private just federally funded and federally regulated and federally everything you know it's like so. ngos or non-government organizations absolutely no funding or support or <laughs> infrastructure or direction or sure sure or yeah. Planning or, yeah exactly or coups um it is it is uh it's it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out because i do think it's all it's getting very geopolitical at this point uh mm -hmm. i mean on that note we saw we saw this you know i put it in the chat you know the other night that uh you know it's getting real out there you can't tell me this isn't you know nation states getting involved uh basically new line here united states and you know uae united arab, arab emirates signed bilateral agreement enhancing law enforcement corrupt cooperation, meaning people that used to flee to Dubai or the Emirates or over there to avoid United States extradition, that is no longer a safe haven anymore. The United States will come and get you. And uh, this, to me, again, is showing that they're trying to tighten up a lot of these global things. And the United States is not messing around when it comes to money and dollars right. and uh, all of those sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, that's the last thing we want is capital flight or to lose the stance uh, you know, of control that we have right now. And we've got to find a way to 
uh, be globally connected, stay relevant globally, or someone else will fill that void if we don't have that power. So that's important to watch, in my opinion, over the next 10 years. Yeah. All right. The the big story, the number one Ooh. story of the day. Uh, here it is. <clears throat> SBF officially charged with wire fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy, securities fraud, securities fraud, conspiracy, money laundering, uh, and more. So... Hooray, Sam Bankman Freed mm. officially mm. arrested. And actually, I think I should have pulled this up. We, Where's uh, the counterfeiting, though? You know? Yeah. I Well, that's going to be a lot harder to prove. Uh, and so we've got, I think we I retweeted it here. Is counterfeiting only for a sovereign currency? Yeah, because <laughs> they were making coins. Right. That is a technical definition, but does it meet a legal standard for yeah, uh, counterfeiting question. since they're not recognized as the outer legal currency? Legal tender? By, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, like you're not counterfeiting U.S. If dollars. More, if, if I make more poker chips... Um, and for, for use in my own game, that's not counterfeiting. If I bring them to Harrah's, then it is. Right. Interesting. Right. Uh, one, well, let's see. Love TJ's excitement for the show. It should be called TJ's thoughts in the basement. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, TJ, I was saying that the other day. TJ's Twitter. This is just, this is what I look <laughs> at at night after I go home from work. Uh, this is all I do is drop links in the chat, you know, between midnight and uh, 11 a.m. So. Uh, all of my messages have typos. I'm the same way, Hodel Gang. Don't worry. Uh, do not want to see the way I text because it's uh, hard to decipher sometimes. So, uh, just real quick, feelings. Did did you guys, uh, Hannah? Did you think SPF was actually going to get arrested, or is this you know, or yes or no? Um, maybe he's going to get arrested. I thought he was going to get arrested. I don't think that anything bad is necessarily going to happen to him. Like I think he'll be able to weasel his way out. Yeah, like a. a what do they call it? Uh, country club jail. You know, don't do too much time. Get off time served. Mommy yeah, and it, daddy will help. Yeah, mommy. But and da- I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, I think it'll be, take a long time for anything to happen. I think you know for sure. Um, you got. We saw Elizabeth Holmes just uh, got sentenced, and that was yeah. ten plus years ago. Um, you know, so it, it will be interesting to see. I think he is going to spend some time in jail. I think it's going to be a long time. Um, and somebody says maybe SBF can share a block with Ginsler and Fauci. <laughs> oh man, but you may say I'm a dreamer, but can no, Ginsler. I, I'm going to be fascinated. I, I think very clearly the tone. Uh, if you, if anybody was listening to the hearing today, John, I think John Ray did a really, really good job as far as like being very direct and answering the questions. I can't imagine having that job. That you know, as far as basically being the CEO of. Um, what do they call it? Enron. Not dissolving the company. Yeah, basically dissolving companies, but there's a uh, stru- corporate structuring and mm-hmm. having to unwind all of this stuff, figure all this stuff out. I mean, it's a massive headache and go before Congress or the go before the House and answer all these different questions. Uh, I think he's doing a very, very good job. I, it's obviously not his first time doing it. Like you said, he did Enron. He's done several other high profile. Um, I just lost the word again. Uh, restructuring. Cor- corporate restructurings. Yeah. Uh, and I think, he, I think he's doing pretty well answering a lot of the questions, but he made it very clear, uh, they're pinning all this on SBF. Like this yeah. is not, um, something that they're just gonna, they're not, they're not comparing notes at all. Basically John Ray is almost in direct contradiction to everything SBF has been saying over these last few weeks. Man, Joel is, <laughs> I don't know what's going on on hit gaming, Someone's but he's, killing Joel. he's dying in there. The it having more fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I think it was great that. He answered all the questions. He answered them very directly. But it, I mean, were you listening to it at all? Yeah, I listened in for a little bit. I mean, I mean does it, it sounded terrible for Sam. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, he was being very direct. He was completely throwing all the the hard sided information under the bus for him. Um, you know, just listening to it. I mean, it was just so crazy that FTX and all of its affiliates had to be licensed as money transmitters, and the whole process of the audits. Uh, <laughs> someone's killing Joel, yeah. but the whole process of the audits, like, you know, you have to, if you're registered in Delaware, you still have to register with all 49 states that you're operating within, um, just for FTX us, not to mention, uh, the, the international portion. So that kind of re- registration requires like an immense amount of independent audits and verifications. And it's just very suspect to me that none of them saw these red flags in such a fast up and come of a, a company basically two or three years in operation yeah. becoming number two i agree and that's yeah. why i'd be interested to see who else testifies because john ray he had a pretty easy answer like oh i wasn't ceo at that time i just you know i parachuted in on you know the 9th of november 9th or whatever it was mm-hmm. so i don't have any information about conversations prior to that which obviously is by design that's why you get a replacement ceo so that way he can give that answer but mm-hmm. uh there was definitely conversations with Gary Ginsler and a f- several yeah. officials from FTX, FTX US. I know uh, that was something Tom Emmer's been on a lot. Yes. Um, 
And I'm going to be really interested to see how those get pressed. They did ask good questions about, to your point, about the bank that was bought at 20x the book price. You know, they paid millions and millions of dollars for this tiny bank with three employees. Yeah. You know, what was the purpose? And then started putting a lot of money in there. What was the purpose? Where was it going? Why? Mm -hmm. You know, was it trying to get around regulations? Was it trying to get around sanctions? Was it money laundering? Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, you know, he answers, I'm not sure. We're digging into that. We're looking into that. Yeah. Um, he's still, I haven't watched any of the hearing. He's still saying, oh, I don't know. No, oh. it's John J. Ray. It's oh, the, okay. the current sitting CEO. So Sam did not testify today, oh. you know, because he's actually arrested now, uh, which again, suspect. great timing that he gets arrested day Maybe before. Corpus. Have we seen the body? <laughs> I know that True. somebody asked that. So, yeah. Somebody asked yeah, have we seen, seen any pictures or anything like that of like I, I haven't seen it. Like I don't know if it's out there or not, but I have not seen. Wait, but he was yeah, never mind. Yeah, who knows? You I know? just watched Judge Dredd, and they definitely have clones. They definitely have what human cloning? Is that what you're talking about? Well, I mean, because Judge Dredd is life, so yeah, they definitely have it. <clears throat> as enthusiastic okay. as I am to see someone go down for this, especially him, we do have unfortunate history as a precedent for this. Looking back at 2008, there was. Financial fraud on a scale even so much larger than this, selling derivatives that had no backing. Great point. Uh, Franklin Rains from Fannie Mae. It was Fannie mm -hmm. Mae, not, mm -hmm. not uh, Freddie not Mac. Yeah. No one, not a single person, Went saw the inside of a jail cell for a single day. And yeah. that is something that destroyed an unbelievable amount of the economy and also then allowed the government to grow in ways that we are still currently dealing with. As optimistic as I am that something will happen, uh, looking at what is relatively recent history to someone who's old um, leads me to certainly have well, tempered expectations. Yeah. I, I, I think that's very uh, wise, you know, to have tempered expectations when it comes to this sort of thing, because not only in 2008, but several times throughout history have we seen most of the time people don't spend hard time behind bars for financial crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie Madoff, a rare exception there, stealing from rich people uh, and stealing, you know, that was one. But Evidence for the most part... Years. What's that? Evidence disappears. Looking mm -hmm. back, I think it was 2014. Again, I'm old. Uh, Lois, uh, Lois Lerner with the IRS. Yep. Josh Koskinson, who was the um, interim IRS head, they had subpoenaed and they were supposed to withhold or hold evidence. Dozens of hard drives mm -hmm. accidentally got destroyed. Mm -hmm. Dozens of phones accidentally got. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they even said, we can't find them. We can't find them. A year later, it's like, oh. They went to the shredder. They've literally yeah. been shredded. We have literally. hard drive shredding machines. Well, and I think part, yeah, and part of that's what happened with FTX as well. I mean, they, you know, John Ray takes over November 9th or 7th or whatever it was. And just so happens a lot of these records, like record keeping was terrible, terrible, terrible. Any records they did have just happened yeah. to get destroyed the day before he took over. And it's like, yeah. well, we're trying to parse through and figure out the best we could, you know, and then, yeah, accidentally. And then they got hacked for some of the assets, you know, night after, night of the bankruptcy, whatever that was. So it's just... Uh, 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 way too many coincidences to call it a coincidence at this mm -hmm. point, but it's just, a, I think we'll have a lot to dig into and try to figure out for years to come. It will be fascinating to see who does it. If anybody besides Sam goes down, because now they've got a clear fall guy, like they mm -hmm. can put somebody down. And as far as the public is concerned, okay, you know, justice has been served. But if you start digging into the Gary Ginsler's and some of these other ones, I mean, I think Tom Emmer had this, uh, this tweet here, another, uh, and, the, and that's why I'm interested to see how how people like Tom Ember press him on this. So he said, okay, so Gary Gensler knows that the FTX was fraudulent from the inception. This is based on a statement from today where they say, from the inception of FTX, Bankman Freed diverted FTX customer funds to Alameda and continued to do so until FTX collapsed in November 2022. So mm -hmm. basically saying this action that everybody's been talking about, uh, this has been happening since the very, very beginning. And according to this statement, Gary from Gary Ginsler, he would have known that if he's saying it was a, you know, from its inception, they were doing this. Now, when did he come to make that discovery? Was it, you know, the same time as all of us, which is what I'm sure he'll claim versus uh, when they had a lot of their meetings, when they were supposedly looking into FTX US, mm -hmm. supposedly looking into FTX. Within those meetings, though, it's verified. He gave FTX a no action relief on those meetings. Um, which is very suspect. And I think and what, and what is a no action relief for it people at home? Basically means that, you know, we're not going to be looking into you. It's right. it's a it's a get a it's a just go do whatever you want pass for the time being from the SEC. That's what a no action relief is. And it's verified that he that Gensler gave that to Sam at that meeting. So that's going to be an ongoing thing in a black spot on Gary's career at the minimum for a long time. Yeah, because at, at the you got kind of two options. One 
you looked into it, you're in, you know complicit, you're aware of it, mm -hmm. and you know you're con cons conspiring against people. You know right. that's one option. Other option, you're negligent, you do terrible due diligence, and you're just bad at your job. Yeah. You know, like there really isn't a good <laughs> option there for uh, Gary Ginsler. Like either he, both of them, either you're a criminal or you're really really bad at what you're supposed to be doing, and it's it's kind of hard to believe it, it's complete oversight at this point. Yeah. Uh, See, let's see. John Ray said in the hearing the theme of 2021 and 2022. Yeah. Who's who's are are you uh are, are you, you incompetent or malicious? Right. Are you stupid <laughs> or are you a criminal? Are you both? You know. Sad. Yeah. The, the outcome is the same in both situations. Uh <laughs> chemistry bro, do you think Binance US is safer than Binance International? Yes. I I tend to believe both are fairly safe again. Self custody all of your uh, funds. It's always the best option. Not your keys, not your coins. But Binance US, yes, was very is very strictly regula regulated. Um, they were under intense pressure, and like that's what's so interesting. Mm -hmm. SEC was pushing really, 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 really hard on Binance for Binance US, getting all US citizens off of Binance.com yeah. onto Binance US. I do think they're backed one to one. Uh, I think Binance.com is backed one to one as well. Again, that being said. Self custody your own funds. If you want an exchange where you can trade, self custody no KYC. Uh, I've been I've been playing with this thing called Apex Exchange. The links in the uh, description if you guys want to use it. It's something. Uh, it's backed by the people from Bybit. It's very similar to Bybit. Don't use it if you're uh, new to trading, but you can trade completely self custody. So you have control of your funds the entire time, uh, and uh, it's no KYC. So you do have to use a VPN. Um, I guess we should get a, a VPN link going too. Yeah. Uh, Nord VPN for a lot of you guys, I'm sure. You know. Um, but I think both both are fairly uh, fairly secure. One uh, one question I uh I, I got kind of or not really a question but just a possible difference is I feel like we have a lot of uh, politicians on both sides but mostly Democrat that are embarrassed or angry that they received these fraudulent funds. Yeah. And I th I do have uh in my opinion I think Sam's doing 20 um, and I think that he's going to experience 20 that, years, 20 years in prison. Um, and I think that he's going to experience that just because of the, uh, with or without parole. That's relevant. Mm, well, you know, I'd say without, Wait. because he's, I think the hammer's coming down on him as big I'll, as it can. I think he's going to get 20 with, yeah, or he'll get something with, you know, something substantial with the chance of parole. Mm -hmm. So it can still send a message. It yeah. can communicate, but then he'll end up probably, you know, getting out fairly. You know, like if it's twenty years with a chance of parole, maybe you get parole in five to seven or something. Mm -hmm. I think his mom still has a super PAC, and I thought mm -hmm. they had a hundred and twenty-five million dollar war chest. Yeah, they've got they've got so, money and they've got influence and they've got reach. We've known that we can. If if anything's apparent from all this, there's definitely somebody with some serious uh, power involved with all of this stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Again, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Like, it, the question is, do they want the, a fall guy to stay in there for a long time? Mm -hmm. You know, to send a message, kind of right. like what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. Actually. Yeah, and the the public on both sides, I feel like, is demanding uh, a head on a stick, mm -hmm. and um, I think they'll get it out of Sam. Um, I do think that going after him is going to be bipartisan, and I have seen reports of numerous Dems that gave the money back and. Uh, even I think his parents tried to give the house back before the, all of yep. this broke open. Yep. So they knew they, what was coming. And they pulled the parents off of uh, Stanford's website and some mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff. I think, yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be effects from this. I think you're right. The politicians, uh, poli you know, that received money here. Now they've been pub, you know, they've, they've it's just blown up in their face in a very mm -hmm. public way. Yeah. It's a lot of people. They don't, they don't want to be attached to this in any regard. They're distancing as much as they can. Everybody wants to be the one bringing, you know, the heat and the pain, not um, not trying to defend. Only person who wants to defend him right now seems to be Kevin O'Leary, which if anybody can figure that <laughs> riddle out, you know, like, great, let us know. But uh, the politicians for sure all want to be, I, I'd be interested. That's why I'm really interested in Gary Ginsler. Is he going to come down hard on it and say, oh, this guy duped me. He swindled me and you know they, they gave me false information mm -hmm. or are they gonna be is he gonna be like well i don't know it seemed right at the time like i don't know but. it's gonna be hard to prove that he was duped by a guy that's so closely connected to his uh school colleague you yeah. know gary ellison caroline ellison gary gensler sam were all at mit at roughly the same time in the same coursework um there's a small group but there's a lot of connections there they're gonna be hard to disprove if you, if you tries to go down that 
naive. Well, I think that's why they're going to put try to put this to bed quick and easy because they don't want people digging too deep. Yeah. They don't want more and more and more follow-up questions. They don't want you to figure out what was going on with that bank. They don't want you to know why it was such a tight circle of people. What are you laughing at, Kevin? Already. Oh, yeah, exactly. He was Kevin was obviously in on the polycule, <laughs> I guess, down in the Bahamas. Uh Bad you know. imagery. <laughs> yeah, it, it is bad imagery. And, and riddled Whoa, with puns. How dare you? Shame, Jesus. <laughs> no, it's it's bad imagery. Uh, riddled with puns said earlier. John Ray said in the hearing that the money was taken off FTX the night of the bankruptcy was both a hack and the Bohemian government seizing the funds. So he cleared that up, basically saying, mm -hmm. uh, "Yeah, they were taken and seizing the money, and that's part of what we know they're trying to do right now. They're trying to seize some of the real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, Ledger's doing a public sale. Okay." Uh, public NFT mint tomorrow where the NFT let you redeem. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Ledger, uh, Ledger, the hardware wallet is doing a public mint. I assume that means a free mint, but you'll have to check. Oh, no. 0. 0.22 ETH to mint. So not cheap. You also get access to Ledger generative art drop next year. You know, so anyway, yeah. Check out Ledger, guys. If you like, I do think that Ledger stacks is going to be pretty, uh, pretty cool. It looks um, pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm trying to get some of those. So, and that bank that you guys keep mentioning, that thing looks like a, like a, one of those tiny little one room yeah. coffee shops. It's like, like it's, you know, it reminds me of one of those, like you build, build your, it's like a module shed that yeah. you would build, you buy it from Home Depot and yes. then you put it together in a weekend <laughs> or really whatever. Weird when I saw the address and like looked at the building, I was like, there's no way that they're going to try to sell this as an $11 million uh, bank. Yeah. Like exactly. That's how much they gave them $11 million. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the number three for employees. It. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the, I don't know the, where all the money's gone at this point is, Pretty, pretty bizarre. It's sad. I mean, John Ray basically was saying they they were commingled from the beginning. There was no mm -hmm. separation. Uh, even though Sam's constantly claiming there was separation, John's basically saying no separation at whatsoever from FTX, FTX UX, or Alameda. So it's mm -hmm. basically been a money funneling scheme from the very beginning where they funnel money into these bank accounts and then give themselves loans, buy different things, invest in different things. Yeah. It's going to be hard to get much if you know there might be a billion dollars or so that we can get back you know if, if there's eight or nine gone we might so we might be getting a tenth back mm -hmm. um and but it's gonna take a long time and speaking of funneling money i also feel like um the fact that ftx didn't file as a foreign agent for the ukraine is going to be a long conversation we'll see play out in 2023 with the donations and the money movements there because they were not they did not file as a foreign agent which is a big no-no Interesting. FTX as the receiver of the political donation or the um, the Ukraine uh, Ukraine and FTX, but FTX had to file as a re uh, registered foreign agent, and they did not do so. Again, not not to be the permanent contrarian, but no, we the love it. We I like love it. we love it when the guests are contrarian because we all talk to each other too much. Yeah. So, um, given the lack of inquisitiveness to Ukrainian ties going back <sighs> six years, um, if you want to talk Burisma, mm -hmm. you want to talk about a certain first yeah. son. Yeah. Um, and a laptop, yeah. and and it goes so much further than that. Mm -hmm. And there's there's an argument to be made that we actually had a presidential impeachment over really covering up potentially mm -hmm. stories or or inquiries into goings on for Ukraine. Um, they have Nigerian level of corruption there um, yeah. at the very least, and what that has done downstream. Again, some very large questions have never been asked, mm -hmm. and uh, and again, I'm I pray that you're right from your lips to God's ears. Yeah, um, but no, that's a great point. Yeah. I, you're right. Those questions aren't being asked. A like lot when, of money went over there, and nobody's like, "Hey, they should hey, be." They right. should be. You you're think that would be the, You think that would be like, the yeah, number one this. focus of a right. politician, right? Like, hey, wait. We got all this geopolitical stuff going on. What about all the money that went to the center of that attention? <laughs> Why? Where? What? How, where is yeah. it? And like you said, it's the more you dig into it, the crazier it gets, right? Yeah. Like there's all kinds of and misinformation. This is, I can that. only imagine this is only 5%. Right? Exactly. It's I mean, just a tip going of the back iceberg. Decades even. Yeah. I mean, we've sent billions and billions of dollars over there. And that know. reminds me of that, that time where Biden was on uh, camera talking about forcing the attorney general out of Ukraine that was in power at the time. <laughs> and that was like at that moment, I was like, some stuff's going to go down there yeah. because of how much uh, cooking of the books we're doing in that area right next to Russia. And here we are, uh -huh. you know, it just, yeah. I will, I'll be one to admit that that's when I was slow to get on where it's like, man, there's all this stuff about Ukraine, all this stuff, you know, like before, you know, the election mm -hmm. and all this different stuff mm -hmm. ties to Ukraine, all this. And then like, and then to see what's happened in the last three to four years of like, 
Oh, wow. Yeah, that stuff was extremely relevant and it definitely wasn't rumors. And, you know, mm -hmm. all of this has been set up for at least 10 years before what we're experiencing right now. Right. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. I mean, it, it's one of those. I don't know. We were talking about it on this show yesterday. I don't know if it was Portnoy or who was saying it. Like, I didn't think I was a conspiracy theory or I didn't think I was a conspiracy theorist. And then all of these things start happening and becoming yeah. true. And well, you know, like, it would be a conspiracy hypothesis or postulate. There you go. <laughs> what was, what was the second one? Postulator? Theory. Is that what you said? Postulate. Postulate. Mm. I'm a conspiracy postulate. <laughs> or conspiracy postulator. That's what I thought. Conspiracy postulator. Postulator. I'll say that. BJ brings the word. I'll take it. Sorry. Prostate. Theory has a very specific meaning to it. Time mm. plus energy equals Bitcoin. Yes. We talk about that a little bit at the top of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's very true. Uh, welcome to the chat, Jimmy CLT. I saw a oh, big thick rat said uh, Drew's cute. You yeah. know, I saw that. Oh. Yeah. Nobody's looked yeah. at the chat, but they've all been talking about Drew modeling underwear oh. Oh. for like five minutes. My way. <laughs> Hell yeah. Drew. Uh, at New York Sorry Fashion. Called the FBI on that one. He's got the high cheekbones, my the wife, chiseled features. My off. wife is actually a fashion designer and used to be a model. And one time we were at New York Fashion Week and a model didn't show up. She made me walk that aisle. No way. I did it in my Find boots. that footage. That's I know, awesome. yeah. I had to walk Was it on it. video? I did this. What was the year? Oh God, it was it was right. Remember when I told you I had to go to New yes. York and I had to hold off? Okay, so New York here? Fashion Week. It was uh it was like February twenty twenty. What? Drew walked to New York yeah, Fashion Week and didn't tell us. Yeah. No, it wasn't it wasn't a dress, right? It was underwear. No, it was like a pink Egyptian shirt with pointy shoulders no and like uh oh my God. Yeah, but I had my combat boots on. So too. Drew's like an onion. There are just <laughs> layers and layers. Oh, there are more layers to Drew oh, than anybody yeah. could imagine. Keep on peeling, He's an baby. Onion. There's wow, I there's guess I'll go back in the ugly closet. Or is he parfait? Yeah, there's uh there's uh, <laughs> there's, uh Secret, secret underground layers, you know, like you just never, he's got tunnels that go 10 um, miles out. I you want know. one, but yeah, don't have that yet. All right, so we've got Sam officially arrested. I wanted to kind of bounce, Ryan Selkis uh, tweeted this. I wanted to ask you guys if this is a sentiment you would agree with or disagree with. Now that it's clear, justice will be served, which again, per our discussion, debatable if that's clear or not. Mm. I'm less angry, more sad. It's tragic to watch a brilliant 30-year-old born with... Every advantage and opportunity to exploit both to destroy thousands of lives out of greed. He deserves life in prison, but there's no joy here. Mm. Uh, agree? Disagree? Yeah, it's an ugly feeling situation. It makes it like I've had to comb through hundreds and hundreds of horrible stories from what Sam has done to people. Life savings wiped out, a million gone here, 200,000 gone there. Someone lost you know, their family, destitute, the house is gone. This guy affected so many people directly. It's um, it's a super sad situation. We want to see it come to justice. Don't want to become bloodthirsty. We need to see that our judicial system will do its job. Um, that's what I'm hopeful for. Yeah, I laugh about the candy cane. I'm, I could, I'm sorry. It was, it, it's great uh, response there. And this is something I noticed. I actually watched uh, an episode back. I was bored yesterday. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good show. If I don't say so myself, or if I do say so myself. But I did notice it's very hard to focus on what people are saying because the chat. I'm reading the chat. It's making me like. Like I was noticing, like Nick yesterday was dropping a lot of really good points. But I was stuck reading the chat, so then he just finished. Like, oh, I should ask him a follow-up question there, mm. but uh, I was too busy uh, laughing at the chat. Uh, Corey saying, uh, "TJ got more class than American Eagle." Thank you, Hodel Gang. Uh, yeah, I'd be—I don't know what I'd be modeling uh, for, but uh, are you going to take it back? Man, it's—it's <laughs> it's you catch me on a good day, you know. But yeah, uh, we won't go there. American Eagle. Uh, <laughs> be paid pretty well. Andy Kane or the stocking. Come on, guys. Chat is great. Uh, so is the talk. Yeah, the chat is good. So love it when uh, when you guys bring really good information. But uh, you can be a little distracting. Um, With those dimples, I love chat's dimples. <laughs> chat's dimples. Um, no, but I tend to agree. You know, it's it's sad to see the pain and the devastation that comes from this. It's hard. Yeah. It's even hard to find a silver lining. Like it's definitely set the industry back when it comes to confidence. When it comes to uh, in in some ways. It's again, it's hard to call it good because there's so much pain here, but it's definitely uh, it's we needed the shakeout, right? Yeah. We needed a lot of this leverage to get wiped out. That's part of what the bottom is. Uh, so it's it's good to get that wiped out. But to me, I think it's just it is sad. It move, it move, it sets things back. It slows things down. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you guys this. What do you think about recovery stories, redemption stories like uh, say, okay, say, let's say he gets 10 years, he serves seven or so. Um, he, does he give another shot, say, outside of uh, financial industry, doing something else? I mean, flipping burgers. Working for like the trash company or something? 
Yeah. I mean, you know, Taco Bell's always looking for people. What about CEO see. of a company not, that's not crypto related? <laughs> CEO of any type of company? I mean, I wouldn't put that out of his possibilities for um, the connections that he has. Um, I don't think he has yeah. the tools to actually be a CEO. You need to yeah. have, you need to be dynamic. You need to, you need to be able to work a room, control a room. You can only be the weirdo wearing PJs at a CEO meeting in a very, very small percentage of yeah. the Facebook sort of and, and world too. Once he's lost that cachet, mm. for him to go in and run a uh, infrastructure um, uh, development company, um, sure. it's you don't see happen. it happening. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's he's a math nerd, so he can get a good job and things doing that. But well, maybe he'll join his brother in the sketchy uh, pandemic system. Well, he's good at raising money, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe he'll be hey. a, a lobbyist. Maybe yeah, he he'll can... go on Shark Tank. Yeah, Shark Tank. Yeah, he'll be a shark with Kevin O'Leary. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he keeps promising a second pandemic to come. He might find his next niche when he gets out. And brother's been up to no good. That's what I think. I think there's a lot of sketchy stuff with the healthcare ties. That's yeah. Uh, let's see, see. The worst thing that is probably going to happen again, a group of new people to crypto will trust centralized entities again next cycle and get screwed for it. Uh, I, I don't know. I think, well, you never know. I, I would hope people have learned their lesson through all this because if they haven't, I don't know what would teach them when like half of the mm -hmm. industry melts down. Mm -hmm. Uh, I tend, I tend to think he should be given another chance if he, you know, serves his time, pays his dues, whatever that is not in anything financial related, crypto related, you know, like nothing in finance, mm -hmm. but, uh, as an individual, I do believe in uh, that people can change. I, you know, especially over time. Especially, but you have to see, you have to see the change, and it has to be something that actually happens. So I think, you know, if he was to serve a fair amount of time, I do, you know, and obviously you got to spend a lot of time rebuilding trust. Like mm -hmm. I guess I, I think of, uh, you know, we're here in Atlanta. I think about Michael Vick, right? As a, mm -hmm. you know, that was a really bad situation. He went to prison, and I, I thought it was really cool that he was able to come back, play for the Eagles. Did a lot of really good work. He, you know, had Tony Dungy as a mentor and was able to have a pretty big impact for animal rights, for you know, youth, and you know, different things around Atlanta. Uh, and so I look at I look at a story like that. You know, very very similar. Well, not very similar, but same type of concept where something very bad happens. Uh, look like they may not get punished for it, then they do end up getting punished for it, uh, and then serve the time and then came back. And then a lot of people said he would never be able to play again. He did play again, and then I think he I think he's still a broadcaster uh, and you know covers I don't know what network, but at least he was for a while. Uh, and I I like to root for people like that. Not saying I'm rooting for SBF. I still want to see justice get served. Uh, and and his attitude towards the whole thing I think has been one of the most off putting parts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, somebody yeah. talked about it in the hearing today. Uh, his his transcript yeah. did leak of uh, what he was going to be saying, uh, testifying in front of Congress today. Uh, we won't read through the whole thing here, uh, but some some people, you know, just you know, basically this this sentiment here, the the tone that it was, was definitely not respectful enough for uh, what they were looking for today. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of points. He was like, it was. Since John Ray took over, I can't do anything about yeah. it. He kept like trying to push the future uh, problem onto John Ray. Like since it's in John Ray's hands, he can't help now. Like he's like some kind of master that can just flip a switch and turn it on. <laughs> you know, I think he got into the God mode when he was creating those tokens and and just he literally believes that because yeah. he's seen it work and no one asked questions till now yeah i mean that's what when ben was asking me today if he thinks he can get it out of this i i really think he does does i think he was so isolated and insulated with a group of people that told him he was awesome and he felt like he couldn't miss and everything yeah. he was doing was working i think he's so narcissistic that he thinks he can talk his way out of anything he has any you know impunity to anything uh, and it, and it kind of came across in a lot of the talking he's been doing this week. And uh, this testimony, basically, the, you know, there's an article about it on Cointelegraph saying, basically, SBF planned to blame everybody but himself, uh, according to the leak. And we can see kind of to what Drew was saying. Uh, you know, he, I wish I had not clicked the button, basically, which we've heard him say this several times, wishing mm -hmm. he didn't file for the Chapter 11, said, oh, I was coerced into doing that. Had I not done that, I would have raised the money overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to your point, blaming. Yeah, it basically, he said he pushed it at 430, and at 438, he had somebody offering yeah. him $8 billion. That's what he said. <laughs> Is Those, he like a Spin Doctors fan? I, I don't know. Like, he de he's I definitely. I don't really get to that joke. What he, time is it? 430? I don't know. No. I mean, I you love mean the 1990s all grunge band. Yes. Yeah, I, I love <laughs> wow. Band. You're really pulling don't drag them into this. 
They're decent. I like those. Um, and yeah, like you said, was blaming uh, John Ray, basically saying if I could have gotten the information I needed from him, you know, I could answer these questions better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's sad to see him, but, you know, saying I want to fix this, I want to take responsibility, I want to do X, Y, and Z, but then never um, actually doing anything to help. And then again, when people ask him, like, what do you think you can do? And it's like, he doesn't really have an answer. Right. Um, Oh, breaking news on SPF again. Now what? Oh, mm -hmm. no. You're talking about the show. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is. He got arrested. It yeah. is breaking news. I was at the airport when Ben found out. We found, like, Watcher Guru put out the first Oh, you guys were coming it. back last night? We yeah. were sitting and eating uh, barbecue, and, man, that was, a, that was an experience. Kind of shocking, you know. Took us a while to come down off of, uh, off of, the, off of all the hubble -lub. You know, Ben got a call from some high-up people talking about it. And, yeah, it was just... It's a super surreal type moment for us, but we're happy to see that. Oh, shoot. Is I lost my last story. Mm. It was not, I clicked the wrong one. Hold hey, on, let me pull it up real quick. Go ahead. You're looking for it anyways. Thinking about SBF, it's not just what he's done now. And I was thinking about this coming over today. You and Ben talk a lot about the million, justifiably with a lot of pride, the millionaires that this show and that this network has made. Think about how many more millionaires there would be. Yeah. If yeah. he didn't do the damage that he no, did, no, yeah. no, I am of a pretty strong mind that he is a significant reason why we didn't have the altcoin season that we expected to mm -hmm. in fall of 21. There's a lot of people that bought in, myself yeah. included, going harder that summer, really expecting, okay, Bitcoin topped out, and now things are going to rotate over and, right. and looking at history, and it never happened. No, and not yeah. only did it not happen, then there was crash after crash after crash. A and that, and I mean, there's a, and there's a lot of evidence to this point showing that Alameda mm -hmm. was short, basically shorting the whole market and pulling prices down, not only on specific assets, but really on thing, you know, on things like Tether and all sorts of different stuff. So, uh, I don't have my own account. It is Hit Network. I've thought about potentially making one of my own socials, uh, but generally speaking, I do see almost everything on the Hit Network accounts. Uh, but yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's what we never had that euphoric blow off top that we've had in cycles past. That's we had that double top that really, you know, confused a lot of different people. And like you said, it had some of the hardest, quickest corrections we've ever seen. Uh, obviously, the Terra meltdown, a lot of uh, factors showing that they were potentially, you know, trying to short Terra, which again caused a major, major collapse. So I kind of wanted to conclude with something on a little bit more positive. Obviously, we talked about the Fed, we talked about Sam Bankman Fried and some of the negativity. Uh, but this article here highlighted, and you know, I maybe not all 15 I agree with, but 15 things crypto leaders should focus on as interest rates rise. And it's really talking about next year. Mm -hmm. Just kind of wanted to get you guys' feedback on like, obviously, seen a lot of pain, seen a lot of negativity. But we still have to move forward. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, you know, survival is part of being within crypto and staying in, continuing to work, continuing to build through these down periods is what lets you experience the, uh, you know, the gains uh, in the bull market. So uh, I thought these were pretty, you know, pretty good things for you guys to keep in mind. You know, you guys are always talking about what can you do? How can you get involved? Uh, and so here, you know, th again, this is 15. I'm going to spin through them pretty quick because uh, we don't have too much more time. But uh, educate, you know, things you could be doing. You know, this is obviously designed for crypto leaders. So, you know, if you want to be a leader in the space, start working on this stuff. This is something that obviously I found interesting because this is something we work on a lot. Um, but edu educating people about crypto's long-term vision, this is something obviously all of our channels, everything we do at Hit Network, you know, our mission at BitBoy Crypto is to help people uh, to discover financial freedom through digital assets. So educating about crypto's long-term vision, uh, building sustainable, reliable products. Obviously, uh, you know, we're building out the academy. You know, Frank's got his premium Discord. We've got Vumio. We've got the book. Uh, that's part of what we're trying to do here is, you know, and that's something else you guys could do, you know, whether it's an NFT project. Maybe eventually uh, the, the uh, BJ's. BJ's page. Dummies. Yeah, well, that and doing product development for people. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Ooh. No, product development. I mean, it, I do too. It's something, uh, I don't, if you actually, BJ, you'd probably enjoy, I don't know if you've met Brian uh, upstairs yet, setting up in the new corner. Uh, new Brian, not not the Brian that's on this show sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Music guy. Have you Talk seen him? To him yeah. Not, so he, uh, that's his background is product design uh, or in product, uh, just really product, not just manufacturing, logistics, delivery, Ooh. all that stuff. But I'll go bug him. Yeah. He's, uh, he used to do it for a sports manufacturing company. Uh, now is done. Uh, good for him. And now he's doing content, but he knows a lot about, you know, again. Now that Kevin O'Leary won't be able to do Shark Tank anymore. We'll uh, make the biscuit tank. 
The mm-hmm. biscuit basement tank. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Tank <laughs> biscuit. I, we'll, we'll figure it out. Na- name pending. As long as it's not soggy. soggy. Yeah, no soggy. <sighs> oh, God. I'm not going to say that one. <laughs> uh, challenges in obtaining finances. This is... Uh, Going to be something uh, to keep an eye on through the upcoming years, especially if they hold rates higher. Mm-hmm. You know, with the rates being down, money's been free flowing the last, you know, handful of years, 10 so years. It's going to get a lot tighter over the next few years. So it's going to be harder to raise funds uh, for different initiatives. So, and we've already seen that. Uh, obviously, within crypto, everybody's sitting on their money a little bit tighter. Uh, the cyc- cyclical nature of the markets. You guys know mm-hmm. we talk about that all the time. Uh, there's bear markets, there's bull markets, there's accumulation markets. Uh, we got bull markets coming back 24, 25, uh, and you got some time to accumulate before then. But April mm-hmm. 2024, next having uh, is not priced in. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna tweet that. Where was that? Uh, somebody. I swear, half the stuff I pull for the show, I forget to uh, actually pull up. I had a couple Will Clement tweets, and he basically was saying uh, the 2024 having is not priced in, and that's mm-hmm. something you guys need to keep in mind. You're going to hear it a lot between now and then. You're going to hear it. In you know, leading up to oh, the having's priced in, the having's priced in. We're not gonna, you know, it's not. It never is. Right. We go. It, it's the beginning, not the end. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, strength of the dollar and its effect on pricing. You know, this is something we talk about a lot on the show. We still, you know, the Fed still controls the market in a very major way. We saw it again today. You know, CPI numbers, Fed rate hikes, that all uh, affects crypto and pricing. We will slowly start to see, I think, uh, some you know separation from those markets. But for now, you know we're we're uh, we're tight. You know, transparency regarding crypto is is important. You know, which we're seeing with the proof of reserves, need for stable assets. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to see USDC versus USDT battles. I think it'll be interesting to see uh, the Cardano stable coins. Stable coins in different mm-hmm. ecosystems will always. No, I shouldn't say always. I think for a long time, be there and be relevant and be part of the discussion. However, I think the general public will mostly be pushed towards state-approved stable coins or CBDCs. Uh, I think United States is going to choose USDC. Um, Yeah, let's see. The rest of these, right, you know. Oh, this was, I thought this was important. We need to outperform TradeFi. You know, we need to... Continue, and this kind of comes back to building a better product. Mm-hmm. We need to have a better product. Like de- decentralized finance works in a lot of ways, uh, in and does have advantages over decentralized finance, especially when it comes to uh, clarity, accuracy, honesty, transparency. Uh, but when it comes to quick execution, liquidity, a lot of those kind of features, it still has a long, you know, uh, UI, UX. It still has a long way to go uh, for the general public. Uh, so I think seeing that continue to improve is something very important. Um, and the importance for this is an in, this was an interesting one too. They said the importance of searching for meaningful tokens. Um, given crypto's history of volatility, prices are just as likely to fall back down as to continue to keep climbing. I would suggest business leaders scrutinize and discover meaningful tokens in crypto markets, meaning. Uh, you know, don't just go into anything pump and dump, you know, really look at the utility behind things, really, uh, analyze what, uh, what it's being used for. And don't, I would say, don't make up or re- don't find a reason to use a token, find or try to see if there's reasons not to use a token. And if you can't find any reasons not to use it and it's still there, then, you know, it's something good to look at. Mm-hmm. Uh, Binance has a bank run and alts go on a fire sale. I'm selling everything in the storage unit and loading up on like three alts. Yeah. It is interesting to me to see how many, and that's the the Seuss five two eight. It's Ooh, interesting we to me. Just got rated by Evan Aldo. Ooh, oh, Evan wow. Aldo! Hey, hey rating with a party hey, of hey. nine. Thanks, dude. Bye-bye. Yeah, Evan Welcome. Aldo. Uh, if you guys don't remember, was on the channel not too long ago. Uh, does a lot of great uh, technical analysis on Bitcoin yeah. and uh, other. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he does. Does he do XRP? I think he does other uh, assets as well. But uh, mm-hmm. good market cipher tutorials. Uh, if you guys use that, uh, be sure to check him out. Part of our our group here. Uh, we are getting ready to wind down uh, for the day. Any uh, any final thoughts uh, for the for the viewers at home? I don't know. Let's have a digital tea party in the next couple of years. What are you guys saying? What's a digital tea party? Is that where we all uh, ditch our CBDCs? Just move to decentralized uh, proof of work concepts only. Let's and, do it and escape OFAC requirements. But that's just me. They want Ray to flex for us. Come on, Ray. Can you give us the flex? Give us give the gun show. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh man. Wow. That's why, that's why you're the gun. Gotta keep those things locked up. Uh, yeah, let's see. Trying to destroy Crypto businesses. Crypto is my favorite person now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Can I bring mushrooms in my tea? Always Cris- Crimson Caravan Company. That makes for a much better tea, as they say. I don't say that, but that's just what I hear. You know, 
Allegedly. allegedly. Yeah, there's health benefits. Health benefits, right? Uh, uh, you got the FBI called on us, Ray. Uh oh, FBI is oh, coming. Weapons of mass destruction. The FBI is coming. So, all right, guys, we love you guys. Uh, as always, we'll be back in the basement tomorrow. Thanks for um, no, of course. Thanks for love coming, it. Ray. Awesome. It was a blast. We'll have to have you back. You know, you did a great job. Um, let's see. In 2012, Bitcoin roughly 2x from the having to a year later, 2016 roughly 4x, 2020 8x. So, do you think a year of 20? Uh, I would check your math on that. I think yeah. we're actually seeing diminishing returns. Yeah. Maybe not from the first having or two, but uh, oh, we're going to be going and hanging out with uh, Joel, Hit Network Gaming. He's streaming right now, and they are doing a giveaway, I think, uh, in this stream. So make sure to hang out with them. Uh, Bud Lightyear says bye, Hannah. Any, uh, any final thoughts for the day, Hannah? You can close us out. Stay positive. Stay positive. Love it. All right. Do, 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 do. Simple.